your old electronic waste. Well known for introducing concepts like green consumerism and the triple bottom line, John Elkington is a serial entrepreneur. He's now promoting a new type of business model where companies describe themselves as B corporations. These companies are for-profit businesses who use the power of business to solve social and environmental problems. John joins me now from the London Stock Exchange studio. John, welcome to Smart Money. For people who've never heard about this before, what is a B Corporation? Uh, good evening, John. And um, firstly, uh, congratulations on Smart Money. Um, B Corporations are a new uh, business to business uh, movement. Uh, they started uh, out in the United States. I, I, I certainly didn't uh, invent them. You know very well that business is now the most powerful institution in the world, but it doesn't always know how to use that uh, power for the best. We saw that in the recent financial crisis. We're seeing that now uh, in Greece. And the key message around B corporations is these are not simply businesses that are trying to be the best in the world, but they're trying to be the best for the world. Now, for people watching now, what are the benefits of actually being a B corporation? And how many companies are now involved in this on, on a global basis? Well, let me start with the, 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 the second part of that question. Last time I looked, there were 1,395 uh, certified B corporations in the world. That's across uh, 42 uh, countries. Now, th th they, they come into the uh, community, uh, the network, for very different reasons. But one key reason is that more and more demands are being placed on businesses around environment, uh, ethics, uh, social considerations, governance considerations. And the B Corporation movement have an impact assessment available online, uh, which helps companies assess uh, the amount of progress they're uh, making and the gaps that they uh, increasingly will have to bridge. Now, how is this actually progressing over here in Australia and indeed over in the UK where you are right now? Yeah, well, it's, it's interesting. On the 24th of September uh, we, in the UK, we launched the uh, B Corporation uh, UK platform with hopefully uh, 50 uh, certified uh, B corporations. In Australia, I had the pleasure of talking to uh, Alicia Darval, who is uh, leading the charge in, in, in your country. And it's fascinating. You're already ahead. You have, uh, last time I looked again, 72 uh, certified uh, B corporations. And they include uh, three listed, uh, publicly listed uh, companies, the largest of which I think is Silver Chef. Now, is that... Uh... Is, I was going to ask you that. Is this just a thing for small businesses or are larger businesses getting involved? Well, I, I, my hope is that small and medium-sized uh, uh, entrepreneurial, ambitious companies will get a huge amount of value uh, out of all of this. But we also need big companies to be interested and involved. So if you look at some of the already certified companies around the world, um, for example, in the United States, you have Ben & Jerry's and Patagonia. In Brazil, you have a Natura, which is a combination of uh, Avon and The Body Shop, I suppose, a very big uh, company. And, and Unilever is being immensely supportive. But there are constraints. There are systemic constraints as to what bus big business can do in this space. And part of the ambition of the movement is to relax those constraints over time. Now, you've had two of your companies verified as B corporations. Why did you do that, and what did it actually involve? It's a, it's a simple answer, John. I mean, most of the work that we do involves challenging other business leaders. And we thought, well, let's, in a way, turn the mirror back on ourselves and challenge ourselves. And we looked around for frameworks uh, and certification schemes that would uh, enable us to do that. And the B Lab, B Corporation framework seemed to us by uh, far the most powerful. There are 900 questions that are weighted. I have to say we did rather less well in the process than we had initially expected. But that, that, that stretched our ambition again. And very briefly, John, uh, where can people go for more information? Well, the simplest uh, answer is Google, uh, B Lab or B Corp. But in Australia, uh, the website is uh, bcorporation.com.au. John, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you joining us on the program. Huge thanks, John. That was John Elkington, Executive Chairman of Volans Ventures. And now, this is where the smart money went this week.
Toyota has launched a new version of its iconic Prius hybrid car. The world's most successful hybrid car has had a big facelift, and it's also been given a sportier look. The new 2016 model is the fourth generation of the Prius hatch. It will arrive in Australian showrooms early next year. A $400 million solar farm near the Queensland coal mining town of Thierry has received planning, planning approval from the Central Highlands Regional Council. The global renewables giant FRV is behind the 150 megawatt Lilyvale solar farm. When built, it will cover 400 hectares and will be one of the largest solar projects of its kind in Australia. It's been revealed that renewable energy sources met 80% of German electricity demand on the afternoon of August the 23rd last month. The huge result was an encouraging sign for the German renewable sector. Most of the renewable energy came from wind and solar power generation. At one point, wind and solar power sources generated a huge 42 gigawatts of electricity. The